Listen to the wind blow. Watch the sun. The 21st night of September Love was changing the minds of pretender While chasing the clouds away Our hearts were ringing In the key that our souls were singing As we danced in the night Remember how the stars stole the night away thoughts are with you, holding hands with your heart to see you. Only blue talking love, remember how we knew love was here to stay. Now December, found a love we shared September. Only blue talking love, remember the true love we shared today. Thank you all so much. We are the Nor'easters, one of Northeastern's uh, co-ed a cappella groups here. Thank you so much for having us. We're so excited to be here. I hope you all have an amazing night. We have one more song for you. Uh, this song, uh, we actually campaigned with uh, NU Athletics, and we released a music video with them last year, so you might have seen it online. Um, and we also released a stairwell video of this song that uh, reached over uh, 1.5 million views on Facebook, so that's really cool. Um, so we're excited to bring you this song. It's called Rise Up. So hope, hope you enjoy it. You're broken down and tired Living life on a merry-go-round You can't find that fighter but I see it in you, so we can walk it out. Ooh, 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 ooh mountains. We can walk it out. Ooh, 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 mountains. And I'll rise up, rise like the day. I'll rise up, rise on a thousand times again when the silence is in quiet and it feels like you can't breathe and i know what i know you feel like dying but i promise we'll take the world to its feet and move
have each other and for that we have each other we will rise and we will rise and we will rise oh we'll rise Let's have one more round of applause for the Nor'easter. So good evening, everyone, colleagues, graduates, students, other friends. Uh, I'm the lucky person who, on behalf of everyone here at Northeastern, uh, has the honor of welcoming you uh, to this celebration uh, of the careers of two beloved colleagues, uh, Mary O'Connell and Millie Drew. Uh, for friends and family whom I have not had the pleasure of meeting, uh, my name is Jeremy Paul, uh, and I have the privilege of serving as dean of this gem of a law school. Uh, let me start the evening by stressing uh, that this is a tribute uh, and not a goodbye affair. Millie is teaching now. Mary will be teaching in the winter quarter. Bo <laughs> bo both of them will always be treasured members of the Northeastern community, uh, but after sharing them with us for so many years, their families and friends have understandably reclaimed large portions of their time. No matter how much of those of us who are wedded to the classroom might wish to dodge the fact, there is, after all, more to life than law school. The speaking portion of our program today will feature many wonderful stories about our dear friends. Some of them will include recitations of their many accomplishments. Both are graduates of our law school. Both have brought passion, dedication, talent, and caring uh, to welcoming countless students into our profession. Millie is a relative newcomer, having been a member of the faculty for more than 20 years. Mary has been here for nearly 40. They have served the law school in more ways than we can count. And so the most important way we can start is by taking a moment collectively to say the one thing I know we all feel. Thank you, Millie and Mary, for all you have done for the Northeastern community. And while we're saying thank you, uh, let me add mine to Miel Marquis, who once again went above and beyond to put everything in place for this marvelous occasion. So what I'm going to do in a minute is to ask our first speaker, Professor Wendy Parmet, to come to the podium to make a few remarks. We will then proceed with our speakers in order, and I ask that each speaker identify themselves rather than having uh, the previous person introduce you. I will come back only at the end to say good night. Before turning the mic over to Wendy, however, I did want to add my own word of thanks to Millie and Mary. I wanted to reflect our students' views, and so I went back and looked at some student evaluations. Millie, I was unsurprised to find all the nice things your students said about you. Professor Drew is great, passionate, knows her stuff. Dedication to teaching and lawyering are inspiring. Obviously cares for her students. 
But one additional striking thing as I scrolled down the page was how many courses you have taught. I went down and down, and every quarter there are more courses, right? Uh, barely ever taking a quarter off, uh, teaching more than a full load while also serving as the go-to person on academic success and disability issues. This willingness to go above and beyond for the students mirrors the same way that you have always treated me. I can't think of a single time when I asked you to do something for the school, even serving on the sometimes tedious agenda committee, uh, when you didn't readily say yes. You even sat through my lecture on exam taking so you could help the students with the questions they had about it. Seldom have I known anyone as dedicated to helping others. It has been an honor to work with you, and I wish you nothing but the best in the many years ahead. Mary, it is a particular pleasure for me to have the chance to tell you in front of so many people just how much I admire you and what you have brought to your calling as a teacher for so many years. For one thing, I have watched how you stick by your friends in good times and bad. When a colleague was going through a tough time, you sent me a late night note letting me know in case I could do something to help. It was also fun how in my early years here, I would tell some story about how we had to do things differently at Northeastern. And you would gently remind me that at Northeastern, we'd always been doing things differently. It had, it had merely taken me decades to figure out how to get here. But what stood out most were key times when I had to make a tough decision. There were times when no one more vehemently disagreed with what I was doing. And yet, at those same times, no one made more of an effort to reach out and help me navigate the challenges. It's all too rare for people to go above and beyond to help their friends, but it's truly extraordinary the way you went above and beyond to help me when we were still getting to know each other, and I will always be grateful. I won't spend too much time reading quotes from your student evaluations, but terms such as effective and passionate, wonderful, energetic and meticulous, and enjoyed the class immensely, tell me that your students will always be grateful as well. Of course, not every student has been thankful for the thorough, lengthy, comprehensive, and sometimes unavoidably critical evaluations you provided about their exams, but your colleagues know just how much effort such evaluations entail, and you set an example proving you meant what you said about the Northeastern difference. The law school will be less of a place without Mary and Millie walking the halls of Cargill every day, but it will always be a greater place because of the many contributions that they have made. Congratulations to you both on well-earned retirements, and may the force be with you. I've been told I have to stand on a step here. <laughs> Another one. <laughs> the indignities of being short. OK. Um, I want to talk about Mary, but I just first need to begin by thanking Millie for being an amazing colleague and teacher and just wishing you the best, but knowing you're really not going far. So thank you, Millie. So, Mary, because your term, so to speak, at Northeastern is coming to an end, I thought it would be appropriate to prepare an evaluation. <laughs> Unfortunately, Miel told me I only have five minutes, so I can't give one as comprehensive and as thorough as you would have done. But then again, as some of you know, those on the faculty at least, we have a new format. You didn't like it, but we're stuck with it. And I can use it now, so here it goes. Great, high honors. Highlights. You have been an outstanding and beloved teacher of property, contracts, legal practice, family law, education law, juvenile law, always challenging and yet always supporting every student. Your performance as a champion of Northeastern students is unsurpassed. You have consistently advocated for students in every faculty meeting I have attended, and you have worked tirelessly to help individual students find the perfect co-op, the perfect postgrad job, the perfect life path. You have proven to be an amazing mentor to not only generations of students, but to faculty, new faculty, and alums. Everyone turns to Mary. Your insight into pedagogy is unmatched. You teach your colleagues how to teach. You are a creative and insightful legal scholar, 
You have written path-breaking articles on alimony, the contingent workforce before anybody knew about that, and other family law and education law issues. You have also been a friend and teacher to the Massachusetts Family Court, regularly presenting to the judges on developments in family law. For you, theory and practice connecting the academy to the court is essential. Page two. <laughs> for a student eyes only. <laughs> you have achieved proficiency <laughs> in all of the learning outcomes of this course. In addition, I want to take this opportunity to note how much you have meant to all of your students and colleagues over the years. You are the embodiment of Northeastern University School of Law, or at least of everything that we love about it. A professor who is always focused first and foremost on her students, who is deeply committed to experiential education, school service, and public interest. And on a personal note, and I think this is appropriate on page two since no one else will read it, I have to say I can't imagine going on without you. It's been hard these last few weeks knowing that you're not in your office. You have been my colleague, collaborator, remember Sandy and the road to serfdom, my partner in crime, some of which were co committed by Magenta and Aardvark and Associates, and my close, close and dearest friend. When I came to Northeastern far too young, and I know Dan Gavelb is here, I have no idea how that was allowed, um, I was completely clueless. You were there for me, as you have been for so many faculty who have come since. You helped to show me the way. You read and mercilessly edited my drafts, just like you mercilessly edit your students' papers. You listened to my worries and complaints. We shared the joys and trials that our families have faced over the years. With your wisdom, persistence, insight, kindness, and compassion, you taught me how to be a law teacher and how to juggle the demands of teaching and scholarship with being a mother, and that was at a time when all of those were not easy to do. Without question, you have earned high honors in this course. Congratulations. I know that I speak for everyone, and for me personally, in saying that I wish you the best. I hope you enjoy being your time as a grandmother, and I know you will. The pl I hope you enjoy the pleasures of retirement and having more time with your family, but please keep in touch. The only way I can get up in the morning is knowing that we have many long walks and many more conversations ahead. Thank you. It's kind of high up here. <laughs> so we have five minutes, and Miel is like strict about that. So thank you, Dean Paul, Northeastern University School of Law, for this incredible honor to speak about Professor Mary O'Connell as she sets out for her retirement. Um, I'm Tara Maddy Doucette. I'm the project director for the Children's Disability Project at Greater Boston Legal Services. So I have some stories. I was about 23 years old when I first met Professor O'Connell. As a young law student, it didn't take long for me to figure out that Mary was quite different from, than all of the, uh, my other wonderful professors at Northeastern. While most professors th taught us by lecture and some case examples, Mary taught us with lectures and amazing stories. Mary is able to take complex law and weave it into a story to make it understandable. While I didn't know, know it at that time, Mary's stories greatly impacted how I learned the law and how I practiced. As a professor, Mary saw me and believed in me, an immigrant young woman of color who came to America for an education, who wanted to fight for social justice and make a difference, but who just needed a little help and direction, and Mary gave me that help. I became her research assistant, and that experience toughened me up really fast. 
I remember being so incredibly nervous when Mary had to review my research. She kept sending me back to the law library to refine my research. And people, we were back in the day without the computer stuff. I was so intimidated and so impressed by Mary's brilliance. I learned that you had to write really, really quickly when you came to Mary with a legal question because she spoke incredibly fast, citing cases and relevant law without stopping to breathe. I honestly felt that she was one of the most intelligent women that I had ever met, and nothing has changed my mind since then. In 2002, while at GBLS, I led a class action lawsuit, again, under the ADA, on behalf of a group of people with disabilities who were seeking accessible public transportation provided by the MBTA. The lessons that I learned from Mary stuck with me throughout the case. Go back. Try again. You can do this. I remember drafting and overseeing the drafting of over 100 affidavits because the proof is always in your client's stories. And I learned that from Mary, right? The case settled in 2006. The MBT agreed to spend $310 million to improve a neglected system of public transportation and to make it accessible to people with disabilities. I was successful in this access work because I was lucky to have supportive people in my life like Mary, who believed that an immigrant woman from a small Caribbean island was capable of taking on the behemoth MBTA. She believed that I could bring about social change and justice for a group of people who were wronged. That's my Mary. In 2007, Jane G. Smith, class of 2000, Jane and I co-founded the Children's Disability Project, which represents children with disabilities who have been wrongfully denied supplemental security income benefits and Mary was back in our lives. Mary has been CDP's academic mentor for the past 10 years. And now, now here's the story about our wonderful Jane. Jane was my co-op student. She had gone to law school after she retired from her job as a guidance counselor. And Jane continued working at GBLS after she graduated and we formed CDP. What we both had in common was Mary. We didn't know that at the time. Jane, who holds degrees with high honors, spoke to me about feeling confused and lost in law school and not being able to wrap her brain around the law until she found Mary. Yes, she did. She talked about sitting in Mary's office and being so frustrated. And, that, and then Mary told her, Jane, when you write, just try to tell a story. Um, it was at that moment that we both realized that Mary taught us in the same way. Because of her lessons, Jane and I are here with a fantastic project doing critical work for the most vulnerable population, children with disabilities. We use Mary's lessons every day in our work as we fight to secure benefits for children in need, benefits which have the potential to uplift families out of poverty. There's more. In April 2012, the Children's Disability Project established a fellowship in Mary's honor the Mary O'Connell Fellowship. This fellowship placed Northeastern law graduates with the Children's Disability Project. Mary interviewed and selected the fellows. So far, we've had two fellows, Catherine Tarpley and Sarah Lydell, they're out there, whose work has enabled us to increase our representation of children with disabilities explore new legal issues, reach out to, the homeless, to our homeless families, and, and develop community outreach materials for our clients. So, you think that was all right? After 10 years of mentorship, this past year, Mary completed a comprehensive article on SSI program policies that have a devastating impact to children with disabilities and their families. For disability rights advocates, this is the first resource of its kind. To us, it is groundbreaking. Nothing like this has been, ever been written about children in this way. We couldn't be happier. This thoroughly researched and documented 72-page academic article, we love it, we absolutely love it, chronicles the history of the children's SSI program. It gives us ammunition for our policy arguments. Everyone who has reviewed it has been incredibly impressed by Mary's ability to take on complex federal statutes and regulations and synthesize them into a story. It's her thing. 
So here, I'm going to end, but here are the, the opening sentences in Mary's article. This is the story of a group of families, a statute with, with its accompanying regulations, and a federal agency. The salient feature of the families is that one member is a child, a child with a disability, and a family has a low income and very limited assets. So there is Mary, the storyteller, enticing her readers to keep on reading, and you'll learn something while you're at it. So thank you, Mary, for all that you've done for so many of us, your students. You have certainly molded us to take on the good fight. So enjoy your retirement. Congratulations. I love you so much. Jane loves you, and the Children's Disability Project loves you. Thank you all. going to try it without the step. <laughs> uh, those are tough acts to follow, but at least our themes will be consistent. My name is Sarah Spofford, and I was one of Mary's very lucky property students. I graduated in 2015, and since then it has been my great fortune to have Mary shepherd my fledgling career along. <laughs> I'm so grateful for the chance to thank her here tonight. Before law school, I was a middle school English teacher, and I've come to understand, as Mary always has, uh, that teachers and lawyers have an awful lot in common, not least their obligation to distill complex information into digestible kind of key points. So if this little lesson is successful in the next five minutes, you all will remember that Mary trained her students to be diligent, to be creative, and always to be engaged. So first, diligence. Our very first property assignment was a case called Moore versus the Regents of the University of California. And it asked whether a leukemia patient named John Moore could claim a property interest in a cell line developed from his blood. Those of you who have read the popular book, The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks, might recognize this issue. Anyway, Mary knew from the outset that the Moore case was, in her words, ferociously hard, <laughs> but she used it both as a window into the big question of what is property and really to teach her students how to read a case. The case had four separate opinions in it and some 50 plus footnotes and it might not surprise you to learn that the author of a 72 page article taught us that each one of those footnotes mattered and that the procedural history mattered. And it's thanks to Mary O'Connell that I and generations of other students can read the law, at least most of the time. Mary trained her students to be diligent and detail-oriented and to understand that competent is a compliment. But she, <laughs> she also opened worlds beyond the minutia, which brings us to her work in molding creative students. The Moore case revealed to us judicial invention, and Mary showed us that courts make stuff up. And it was our job to think critically about whether they've done it the right way. And so even as students, first-year law students, are frustrated not to have elements to memorize the way they did in torts or rules to anchor them the way they did in Civ Pro, Mary insisted that the lack of an answer key was always an opportunity to be creative and that lawyers do not have to be the drudges transacting other people's dreams. Instead, they could explore huge questions like the ones being asked in the Moore case. When and how do you stop owning your own body? How and why might other people profit from it? And beyond the Moore case, if you catch a Major League Baseball, do you get to keep it? Does Georgia O'Keeffe get to recover her stolen paintings, even if the statute of limitations has run, and maybe they weren't stolen to begin with? If you hold a fishing pole, can you walk on rich people's beaches? <laughs> do those beaches belong to all of us? Does water? what can and cannot be owned. As Tara said, Mary brought the law to life with these complex kinds of questions, and Mary trained us to stop looking for an answer key and to be creative problem solvers. Because as in the Moore case, and as we all know, lawsuits are about real people in crisis. And Mary empowered her students to respond and always to be engaged. I sometimes despaired early on that coming to law school had been a mistake and worried that the law was a tool better positioned to protect the status quo than to change it. But Mary's teaching always reminded us that the law was dynamic and alive and responsive to real 
and complex and contemporary problems. And her message was always, remember the human actors. Mary reminded us to be people before lawyers, to think about interests and solutions and compromise and what people want and why they want those things. And that if we engaged with the world in this way, lawyering for change was not pie in the sky, but a real possibility and one for which she was preparing us. And I mentioned at the beginning my own background in education, and it's been one of my great joys in recent years to watch my former middle schoolers graduate from college and begin to forge their own paths forward in the world. Students' paths are a teacher's legacy, and as Tara just demonstrated, Mary's is a very rich one. She has trained legions of us to be diligent, to be creative and to be engaged, and in doing so has challenged us to craft and enact high-impact dreams. I very much look forward to honoring Mary with my career. This profession and this world are the better for the generations of students molded by Mary O'Connell, and I'm so grateful to have been one of them. My name is John Naranja. I graduated from a class of 2014. Collateral estoppel, race judicata. These are legal terms that we learned in law school and principles that we apply in the courtroom. Basically, they mean that if you've argued an issue or claim before, you can't argue it again. Another way to say it is, you can't have a second bite at the apple. Now the origins of this phrase, second bite at the apple, are biblical. The story goes like this. God created the Garden of Eden. He put Adam and Eve there. And he said to them, everywhere this is paradise. I just want to restrict you. You cannot eat from the fruit of the tree of knowledge. Well. Also in the Garden of Eden was the serpent. And he happened to influence Adam and Eve, and they took a bite of the apple. That was their downfall. That was their strike. They weren't allowed anything more. Those of you who know me know that I had a previous career as a physician. I practiced for 12 years in a clinical practice, and then I decided to go to law school. I wanted to take a second bite at the apple. But instead of having a serpent, what I had was a shepherd. That shepherd was Millie Drew. Now, not many people know about shepherds or sheep, but I just want to share something with you. Shepherds, they take care of their sheep. They help them along a journey. And another little known fact, if a sheep falls over, they can't get up. The shepherd has to go and help rub their feet and lift them up. Now, Millie Drew never rubbed my feet. <laughs> but before I stepped foot on Northeast campus, she was one of the first to reach out to me to make sure that I was comfortable, to make sure that she knew I was there, that she was there. And when I did first step foot on Northeastern campus, she was also one of the first to greet me one of the first to give me that orientation for a nervous student, even though I had a previous career. And on through my 1L and 2L and 3L years, Millie Drew was my shepherd. She was there to teach ethics, professional responsibility. She was there outside the classroom. She was there to teach us and prepare us for exams. She also helped with client counseling and extracurricular activities. She combined her skills as a, with her background as a nurse, as a lawyer, and as a teacher, and provided for a flock of students, law students, at Northeastern University. I'm eternally grateful for her, to her, because of, because of her way of giving me a second chance to have a second bite at the apple. And I wish her the best for her retirement and congratulate her.
Well, I'm here by video because I can't be here in person, regrettably. Um, I'll be in South Africa when Millie and Mary's retirement party is happening. Um, and so I couldn't not talk about Millie's retirement in particular. Um, not that I'm not partial to Mary too, but I'm, I'm going to talk about Millie. So as expected, Millie has a very modest personal profile on our NUSL faculty website. Reading it, you would never know how indispensable she has become to the mission of the law school, to its soul, since she joined the faculty nearly 20 years ago. Of course, I knew Millie earlier than that. I, I knew her when she was a student at NUSL, class of 1987, while she was still living in Dorchester with her partner, Jeff. At that time, I often rode to school with her, her, her partner, and with other NUSL uh, students. Self-admittedly, uh, Millie was a typical NUSL student, albeit an older one. Transitioning from her prior work as a 